All right. Um, we just did a podcast with Ben Mintz. It's getting late here, but um, I think everybody's gonna enjoy it. You know, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna learn everything about this motherfucker in this in this particular podcast. And uh, if you know Ben, you know Ben can talk. I can't even throw bread at the ducks with you. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, this is a... This is a St. Bernard Parish production. It's like a jungle sometimes. It make me wonder how to survive. So many summers I get high to keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It make me wonder how to survive. So many summers I get high to keep hey, from going one. under. It's like a jungle it's like sometimes. It's like you're not going to get high for so many yeah. summers I get high to keep from going under. It's like you're not going to get high to keep from going under. It's like you're not going to get high to keep from going under. It's like you're not going to get high to keep from going under. It's like you're not going to get high to keep from going Stop drinking that classy Ninja Turtle shit. That's not us. That 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 ain't you, bro. You're not there yet. And even if you get there, don't 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 sell out like a douchebag. See what I'm saying? You ever met somebody? They were drinking that big old bottle of Pellegrino, and you and you left saying, you know, I was a good dude. Nah, look, hey, I got a hop water. For, it's alcohol free. Oh, there you go. Hop yeah, water, it's like gin. Water. It's ginger ale. Oh, it's ginger yeah, ale. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah, said no, sparkling yeah. water. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I saw no sugar too. I'm like watching. Yeah, that. no, it's good on all that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do. Hell yeah, cheers. That's real nice. Yeah, cheers, bro. It. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, cheers to a beat. Shout out. I was always a big Abita fan. Me too. Yeah. Even when I was a well, kid. Oh, dude, I used to drink so much Abita, the purple haze. You still think really highly of it. Growing up too, yeah, and not to like give it's away. Straight, it's a straight Louisiana brand too. Yeah, though. like you think of it. Well, and then I was in Abita too. So like Hurricane Katrina hit, I was probably I was thirteen at the time. Katrina hit, and that's when my dad moved was to Abita. So dude, the the, the brewery was right there. So we were always trying to get Abita, bro. Even when I was before twenty one, we were trying to get Abita. Dude, this is crazy. So this is just no alcohol. It's just sparkling water. Yeah, I had to. So I told Nick Underhill to grab one too, and the first thing he was like, "Nah, bro, like you know, I don't, I don't drink." I was like, "No, dude, like that's, that's just straight like that version of like sparkling water." So it's dude, like this is crazy. I'll, I'm gonna have to get. Some it's like the hops that like whatever they use for the beer, um, like flavor wise or something like that, just without alcohol. That's what Incredible. it is. Yeah, well, I love it. It's good. It's got a little IPA flavor. Yeah, you feel like you're <laughs> drinking a little alcohol. Yeah, it's it's nice, man. So what's up, bro? Uh, a lot. You I, know, yeah. uh, <laughs> a lot of th- a lot of things are up. Uh, yeah, it just and pretty much all all of them minus what you saw in the Superdome on Sunday are positive. Uh, that was rough. Uh, first of all, I'll just say, hey man, I had a blast with you in Oxford. Yeah, dude. really glad you came up. You got to do the do the deal. We got to. Kind of pop around, do the Grove deal. I thought, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have known where to fucking go if not for, and that's what I'm saying. If I didn't link up with you, bro, I wouldn't have got half them places. I mean, dude, we were in the prime of that shit. Oh, yeah. What'd you think? How, what'd you think? I thought it was, it was good. I'd like, I thought it was like at first, I was like, when I was walking around, I was like, man, this kind of feels like a, like a really like lit book fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but then I was like, okay, you know, we started, re- it's almost like you got to dive into like, the heart of what's going on and we started diving into it and uh no it was a good time bro one thing i'll say about old miss bro all them people showed me love i had nobody come and i did not think this was gonna happen i had not one person come up to me like you know fuck lsu i think there was one when we were walking through that which walk one of I, don't, I just remember when we were walking through the walk of champions on the way there there was like one somebody was like fuck you well, not you just just tell it not no, it oh was yeah so it was just like jay saint got at him i remember that clip yeah yeah and yeah, yeah jay saint was <laughs> I think he antagonized that. If I remember editing it, because I was editing it, I was like, okay, it looks like you kind of yeah. tried to get him to speak right there. No, but, well, I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, Oxford, the thing is, is, uh, you know, there's no place. I mean, no one gets, it, it's just a different deal in Oxford. Uh, it's, yeah. it's cool. The, everything's, it's nice, nice how place. everything's closed. The campus bro, is beautiful. Remember I told you this, bro. I was like, I can't believe that, that like, you can only go one state over, and there's, like, hills, houses yeah. on hills. I mean, bro, like the architecture was like completely different than what we used to see in down here, bro. Like everything's flat down here, bro. You go look in the backyard, there ain't nothing going down or up. You know what I'm saying? And it was just different. You yeah, know? It no, like, it is. And Oxford's such like, uh, I mean, it's just nothing like Baton Rouge. It's just like a small college town. It's beautiful. It's like, it's different. Picture, it's just, it's like 30,000 people. You yeah. Know? It's a smaller uh, deal. And it's like, you can walk around everywhere. It's close. And 
it's a different, it's a totally different tailgate situation. And LSU and Ole Miss are ranked one and two and like tailgate and all the time. Oh, that's the total rankings? Oh, uh, yeah. Ole Miss okay. and LSU and alternates, but they're different. And like, right. you know, I mean, you can't have grills in Oxford in the Grove because you got trees everywhere. That's like what every- I did notice. There was a yeah. lot of like, there was a lot of like crock pots and meatballs. Yeah. And chicken strips. Yeah. There's a lot of, there are a lot of chicken strips and dips and that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, so the food thing, I mean, you know, I'll be honest. Like, I'm gonna call like I see it. I mean, you're not gonna be, <laughs> you're not gonna beat the Baton Rouge food thing. I mean, they're grilling. Yeah, because the motherfucking Baton Rouge will literally go catch something in his backyard yeah, and put it on a grill. No, no, but it's a different scene. But it's beautiful women everywhere. The Grove's picturesque. And, beautiful uh, older woman. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna tell you, I don't, I'm, I don't know if they're gonna see this or not, but the the ladies behind us, bro, she would have touched me one more time. <laughs> I would have got a hotel in fucking Oxford, dude. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Good bro. luck finding one on game weekend. Uh, yeah, well, that, she would, she would have found me one. They, they, there you go. Trust me, bro. She had her, just looking at her, my credit was going up, but like, yeah, no, it was a good time until. Well, you yeah. got out of there. You well, the game. I had to. No, I don't blame you, honestly, Devin. I respect you just coming up there. Because having to do the Saints Sunday at noon and yeah. your Sunday show, I mean, Oxford's a full five from NOLA. It, it was a full five. No, it's a full five. It was a full five. You're almost in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, no, it went from you were listening to Sports Talk Radio when it started to Dave Ramsey was on telling me about my finances. <laughs> That's <laughs> it, it was a full five. No, man. it's it's a good ways, but uh, I, I also thought the game atmosphere was great. You know, I think it we've, was. we've come a long way uh, in Oxford on that deal. Like, obviously – you, you know, there's nothing. I mean, you can't ever compare it to L. It's never going to be just, a well, It's just, well, it's just different. But it's also has 2 million people total, and you got yeah. three public schools. I think it's also like I've never been to an away college game. I've never been. That was my first one. So, like, for instance, like when LSU scored, it was quiet. Rightfully. Like, yeah. why would. LSU band's still rocking there, though. But it's almost like, but like, but I'm not used to that, bro. I've never been on that end where, like, if LSU scored, nobody was. So I had to, like, look around, like, dude, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, wait, that's right. I'm in fucking Ole Miss. <laughs> I'm in a sea of red. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, it was it was different from that standpoint. But no, bro, like, everybody was good to me. Um, It was a good time, bro. I mean, good. even shot a shot of Rumple Mints. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun little what's tailgate. Some, what's we some... hit about six. I guess we hit five, six Grove tents. Yeah. Um, Everybody was super super friendly you got to go by the library the famous that's kind of the big oxford bars where we met up yeah uh, before and man uh you know got to see the game and i'm just i'm really just glad you made it because it's a different experience we were walking back because we had to i mean we left i don't know with like five. 40 well you, that when when lsu scored to go up 49 40s when you left yeah because i felt and i guess that was the best thing you were the the good voodoo for Ole miss leaving the stadium yeah because everything certainly went a hell of a lot better well we were, walk, we were walking past sonic uh you know the all-american restaurant sonic you know and uh, dude, we just saw like two Mississippi residents, obviously jumping up and down. Oh. And I didn't even need to pull up like ESPN or nothing like that, bro. I already knew what the fuck was going down because I saw him score that first time, right? And then I saw this guy at Sonic jumping up and down. I was like, "What well, that is? You know they fucking scored again." And that was it, bro. And we had a lot of money invested. That was a sad ride, but one of the saddest. Not one of the saddest. That was probably the saddest drive of my life. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love to hear it. Yeah. No, it's that. So it's interesting being on the old Miss side of it, and especially like I grew up in Monroe, and you and me have a lot of mutual friends. All the ESPN Baton Rouge guys that we're yeah. so close with. Look, and I, I wanted to talk about my LSU relationship well, during this. Let uh, well, I don't mean to cut you off. I want right. to start from the beginning. Okay. Like the really beginning. Okay, the real beginning. Okay. Yeah, because even though. You're on the internet every day. You are very pretty open about like your life, where you come yeah. from, and all that shit. So I, even if 50, 60 percent of people know that, dude, a lot of people may not know anything about like your beginning of your life, where you grew up, all that shit. So yeah. I always like to ask that shit. All right. You well, know? I'm uh, I was born in uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Lived there my first eighteen years, and you know Monroe, Northeast Louisiana. You know I wouldn't sit here and say. Monroe is like the most well-known city ever, but Devin, you and I always talk about it. The characters oh, that come out of there, are craziest motherfuckers it's, it's some, I've ever some met. Some wild ones come out of there, um, but I, I lived there uh, till I graduated high school. But I, I'll admit, I grew up an LSU fan. I mean, I used to go to games. Like my mom went to law school. Basically, I, I grew up. I'm like a mutt. My dad went to LSU. Was Cap Sig at LSU. Okay. My mom went to law school at Ole Miss. My mom's family. We have a farm in the Mississippi Delta by Greenville. Uh, Where is that? that? I don't know. Is, I don't know uh, enough. Of- right on the border by Lake Village, Arkansas. It's it's kind of middle of nowhere, to say the least. But it's, it's okay. right off the Mississippi River. But great farmland. Okay. Um. And so 
I have like the, all the Mississippi ties through my mom. You ever had to like milk cows and shit? Man, you did, do I look like someone that would be very good at milking cows? I don't yeah. know what a motherfucker <laughs> looked like. <that laughs> no, <day. laughs> yeah. no, it's like soy. It used to be cotton back in the day. It's soybeans now. Dude, and yeah. And corn is what we grow. Okay. Um, But so that was like my Mississippi side was from my mom. And then my dad was the LSU side. But I grew up going to games in Death Valley. Where's your dad from? My dad's Mon- from Monroe. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So I grew up going to games. Uh, it, at LSU, and like a lot of my favorite childhood memories are in Death Valley. I mean, some I uh, just, and so even when I go in there now, it's still uh, nostalgic. You know, I just have so many, uh, so many memories from it. But then when it came time to go to college, I couldn't figure out where I wanted to go between LSU and Ole Miss. All right, real quick, let me ask you this: yeah. Growing up, Northern Louisiana, how was it like as a kid? I don't want to go too far before yeah. I. Like, what was life growing up as a kid? What was it like being, like, 10-year-old mints? Ten, ten-year-old mints, uh, <laughs> it was fun, man. man. Uh, you know, the, I, I was I was always, like, the fat kid in right field in Little League. Okay. In baseball, I was never, like, the best athlete. Um, but, man, North Monroe's cool. Uh, everybody, it's kind of close-knit. Like, your friends are your family, and your yeah. family are friends, and everybody's kind of, you know, watches out uh, for each other. And it's it was a great – it was honestly an amazing place Church? to grow up. Uh, yeah, I also I went to Grace. I went to an Episcopal school, and I went to church there. Oh, okay. And then I went to St. Fred's, the Catholic high school. So I was pretty pretty sheltered little boy, going to all their private schools. So that's what like that's what I'm, at. I'm like I'm trying to get the vibe of like you growing up. Like when I was growing up, you know, if I was like 10 years old, I was probably like watching wrestling. Now, yeah, I was granted, into that. big okay. wrestling fan. Dude, what's it? Lo- what? Loved it, loved it, loved it all the way till I was about 18. Uh, but I was like DX era. Okay. Uh, yeah, man, I was into all. Cause you, you, I'm 31. I'm so, 40. Okay, so all right, nine years. So you were all right. Wrestling was in the stage of like uh, maybe like Jake the Snake, Randy Savage. Yeah, that was when I was a kid. But okay. the, era, the era that really I was into is in high school was when Stone Cold right. and the Rock blew Attitude up era. and the DX stuff, the HBK, and then and you know I was I was like psycho into it. Like yeah. my mom like thought I had a problem. Dude, does it just go to show how? wrestling was really like dude think about that because i think about that all the time i'm like bro if i would have been in high school college when stone cold was on like i was a kid sitting uh you know with my legs crossed in front of tv just watching you know what i'm saying so i knew it was good for a kid but you were in high school and wrestling was that good oh yeah it was big like, nobody in my high school would give wrestling a shot they'd be like dude that shit's fake you know what i'm saying we were past it it was almost yeah. like you know what i'm saying i couldn't say nothing Dude, when we were a kid, bro. Uh, we used to have pay-per-view parties for every Sunday. Nice. And then I went at the one of my biggest regrets, I got grounded and couldn't go to Royal Rumble 2000 that was in NOLA. I was at. And all my friends went. Yeah. And I couldn't go. And it I was, was like my senior. Period. It was like my junior high school. And Stone I was, Cold what? I was, yeah. I was so mad. I'm still mad I missed it. Bro, it's 20, cons- 23 years later. That is considered one, top, no doubt you could ask anybody, that's considered top three Royal Rumbles of yeah. all time. Was that one right there? Because Stone Cold got uh, knocked out by Triple H. Yeah. He had them all bloody and stuff, but he had never entered. He had never entered. Ah, oh, he never actually So, entered. So he was still good to go. So once he kind of recouped from, like, just getting his ass beat, he got back in the ring, bro, and it was like, cla- dude, it was everything I had watched for, like, the previous four years about Stone Cold in person. I'll never forget that night, bro. Dude, for yeah, real. man. Well, I, I'll never forget watching, mom- it, watching it at home because I think I failed some class or yeah, something. Well, and my mother did not, <laughs> yeah. did not allow me to go to New Orleans. That, that was super into Well, Mincy, 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 you, you didn't, you know, tell us your top five, though. You just said you're big wrestling guy but you top you five bring your top five though. top five wrestlers take, and take your time yeah your top wrestlers? five wrestlers uh heartbreak kids number one Shawn michaels the big icon the showstopper the main yeah. event of the evening uh, i'd say rick flair number two Woo. just for everything he did uh for all of it you know I all of think, it yeah i think he, all of it yeah. yeah uh those are definitely my top two i mean i love the the the, the Rock with the promo stuff and energy. People I forget. Just, the yeah, just, well, The Rock, the, what he brought to the mic, he changed the whole game. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, there's Rock, like, even in the way he carried himself as persona, like, that influences me and you today, I would think. Like, Absolutely. That, I go to sleep watching Attitude Out. Yeah, but just, like, the way, I don't know. So, I'd say Rock is uh, in the top top three. Gosh, behind that. Who else is behind that? Man, those are my top three for sure. I mean, I, lo- I, mean, I really yeah. like Stone Cold, too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but Stone not- Cold, I make it the top five? I'd, I'd, I'd say five, probably. Okay. I loved oh, Mick Foley. Oh! I love okay. Mick Foley. 
Love Mick Mintz Foley. does strike me as a as a yeah. Mick Foley fan. Yeah, Mick Foley. Not me. I didn't expect really? that. Really? Did not expect yeah, that. Yeah, no, the, uh, the alter egos, the Cactus Jack, the Mankind, the dude, versatility. Great. Also, just the way he'd take bumps. Yeah, dude, the Like, best. the way he'd... I mean, I like... Still remember Undertaker, the King of the Ring 2000, when he threw him off the top of the cell. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah 99. Yeah. yeah, or 99. I remember that. Like, that's like, yeah, yeah. I just loved how he went all out. That I read, and I read his book. His book was tight. Oh, I never. I oh, didn't. yeah. I mean, okay. His book's good. Yeah, no. So I'll put Foley four, Austin five. Yeah, that's, that's a solid top five, to be honest with you. I mean, I'd probably say, no complaints. just so I can get mine out there, because I don't want to let this opportunity go. I'd say for sure Austin. It was so. It was just so overwhelming, bro. For like to be a kid watching Stone Cold, bro. It was literally, literally the coolest thing on the TV. There was nothing cooler to me than Stone Cold Steve Austin. And it was at a time where you didn't have the internet, so you didn't. There was no like deciphering what was real, what wasn't. There uh, wasn't no like knowing if Stone Cold got hit by a car if he did. Yeah. No, he really got hit. He got hit. He got hit. I yeah. went to school the next day saying, "Man, I told my boy Jonathan Turner, I'll never forget it." I was like, "Hey, bro, I don't know if Stone Cold's dead or alive." But we're going to see. Cuz we just didn't know. It was just like it was such a great time. Yeah, man. yeah, it was better when you didn't know. Two is Taker for me, okay. Undertaker, Smooth. just because that was a guy that, bro, like even when I would go to the events in the lakefront and shit like that, uh and eventually the Smoothie King, um Taker w- w- was so fucking scary to me as a kid, bro. Like, I had to go to the bathroom. Real life. It was literally like that, bro. He th- That character was literally that scary for me, bro. Like, I had to go in the fucking bathroom. So the lights come off and you just lose all your I, I told my stepdad I gotta, gotta go piss. Go. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go pee. I don't know, man. Every time I heard the doom, you know what time it is, man. Like, it just you could feel it yeah. come up. Like, you could feel the, the right. vibe just go crazy. Maybe I was just a scary little kid, but... As I got older, that doom. Mm, like you know what time it is. That shit you know made me want. That is. shit made me want to cry, son. That's how yeah. like legendary that dude was, you know. So, and he was a guy where when wrestling WCW tried to go after WWF, he was the one guy that didn't jump. Yeah. You know, Scott yeah. Hall did, Kevin Nash did. There's a lot of guys that jumped and said, you know what, fuck this. Ted Turner's gonna pay me guaranteed money. Fuck Vince McMahon. Y'all going under anyway. Yeah. And then Stone Cold was born, and that's when they. That was over with. Yeah. Uh, the was, other one I want to mention is top five that I was forgetting. Uh, Chris Jericho's in my top no, that, five. No, these are good. Yeah, Jericho's good, in my no, top five. It's a good, you got a good six. Yeah. You got a good hey, six. Yeah, or six, yeah, whatever. Yeah, six. Round, yeah, rounding six. mine off real quick, uh, three would be The Rock, four would be Flair, and then probably number five for me would be, dude, I, I'd probably have to agree with you there on Shawn Michaels yeah. would probably be my fifth, or Breaking. shout out Kurt Angle. Mm, great one, too. Great one. Love, love the Kurt Angle. And love Randy Savage. I want him to kind yeah. of be in that situation, too, because Randy Savage just had an aura about him, bro, with Miss Elizabeth and yeah. all that shit. So. His promos. His promos. Yeah, yeah he kind of started the promo. Yeah. I, say, I mean, well, Ric Flair promos. started it. but Dusty Rhodes was a good promo okay. guy, too. You know, son of a plumber. So, um, anyway. That's all a great right. list. That's bringing some nostalgia back to me. Like, I, if you're going wrestling, you're going to laugh your ass off at this. I was so obsessed with it. I had a lot. I had... Like, when I was, like, 14 or 15, like, I, at a point where I was, like, bootlegging wrestling tapes. And yeah. Like selling them on the internet and stuff. And I would get, like, New Japan pro wrestling. Damn, you were in there. Dude, I was, like, dude, my mom, like, it was unbelievable. And, like, yeah. I'd go to the post office. What would your like, mom think? Like, I mean, you and Monroe, you and Monroe watching New Japan wrestling. Dude, so, yeah, she probably didn't think very highly of it. Well, me. that was one thing my dad, like, he would only let me watch WCW, he's thought, because I had my finger on that previous channel, please believe it. But, like, he would only let me watch what he saw what was WCW. He didn't like WWF once he saw Sable hero. showing, Sable yeah, showing the the tits. Hero, yeah. yeah, that was it for my dad. When Sable showed her tits that night, my, my dad was out. He said, no, bro. Under the, yeah, in the name of God, we're not going to be watching this. Yeah, he just, <laughs> it was. That's hilarious. No, I was super into it. Like, I've got this personality thing. Where, like, I, I have a very addiction-based personality, and it could be a good or bad thing, but if I get into anything, I'm all in. And yeah. Like, I was all in on the wrestling. All so, time. all right, decent childhood. Anything I sticks got, out? Yeah. Okay. Got the, here's what stands out. So, I realized I was about 14. Yeah. Well, I wasn't that athletic, and so I could either, like, just be on the baseball team but never actually play or whatever, and I figured out, like, you know what? I'm not that athletic in the big sports. I'm just going to go all in on tennis and try to be the best I can be to, like, compete. You know what I mean? And so I got super into tennis. You ain't got to be somebody to drink hot water. You just be yourself. Type of shit, man. You drink one sip of it, you're going to be feeling like Jimmy Buffett when he was alive, of course. But you know that was a good feeling. 
zero cows, zero alcohol. Just enjoy the shit. Another drink, another beverage that Abita just matches with the atmosphere. Sun's out, beautiful day. Look at this fucking hop water. I mean, stop telling me to drink the same shit as Jeff Bezos. I'm not Jeff Bezos. I'm not going to drink a big green bottle of shit. I'm going to crack open a, a bit of hop water, and I'm going to thank God for giving me something so refreshing. Like, I was never, like, elite, but I could compete. What so did you do, like, when you did something good in tennis? Dude, so I was a hothead maniac. I used you to like, You like Mack and Row? Dude, it was bad. My dad couldn't even come watch my matches. I'd be throwing rackets. Like, I, I was a psycho, uh, psycho kid. Like, I just, like... We get too mad. Bad tempo? Yeah, the worst. Didn't just like, like to spoiled lose. Spoiled little bitch, basically. Okay. You know, looking back, just didn't like to lose. Just took everything way too personal. But so senior year, though, this is the the best. This is the they, my one athletic moment of glory, boys. So we get to relive it. This is good. So we put basically the number like three player in the entire nation was from Loyola and was in our state thing. So we knew we couldn't win singles, but you can either play singles or doubles. So we put our top six people in doubles, three teams, because we're trying to cheat the rules because we knew we couldn't win singles. So I was like, we're going to put our top six guys in doubles. And then I go get my buddy out of freshman baseball who used to play tennis and just grab him to try to be our singles guy to just try to like win a point or whatever. He ends up being the sacrificial lamb and has to play the, the loyal guy named Jonathan Howard. Uh, he, you know, he, he was up, my buddy was up 40 love first game and stayed against him. And then he won one other point the whole, the whole time. So we get one point out of him. So anyway, the, uh, quarterfinal match, me and my partner, Bradley Rose, we're playing the number two seed. Y'all two on two. Yeah. It's two on two. It's doubles. So we're playing the number two seed. Y'all hyped up. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing Adam McQuan and, uh, uh, Mark Chapiton who are both top 10 in Louisiana. Good. And like me and my partner are good, but we're not, these guys are like, great. We're, we'd be a. We'd be about a six or seven to one dog if you put a line on this match. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those gotcha. are two seeds. We're like the number three team on our team. So, anyway, it's like three, two in the first set, but we're feeling good. And I don't know if God came down into my body or Andre Agassi came into my body. We're down three, two first set. We beat these bastards six, three, six, oh. We like, I'm like, turn, tennis I don't ter- know what that means, but I imagine yeah. that they didn't win another round. No, dude. They didn't win a game. And it's like a tennis term, like you're treeing when you're playing out of your mind. I'm just rallying, like, Mark Shepard, he was, like, former top five in the state, and I'm just, like, destroying him off the baseline, dude. I played. I mean, how like, many people are watching? Like, uh, Probably about 30 or 40. I mean, oh, was, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it was a huge upset, but the funniest moment of the whole match is Shepard has this, like, slow voice. He threw his racket in the second set. He's like, how the hell are we losing to a fat guy and a Mexican? Cause my and my partner was Italian, but he had dark skin. Okay. But we just beat the hell out of them, and then we ended up winning state by one point as a team. And our upset of beating the two seeds is what won state. So I get up to the sports banquet. God, somebody, if somebody has the St. Fred sports banquet footage from this year, <laughs> please find it. So a year after I guarantee the state title, I get up the sports banquet. I'm just feeling all swagged out. You know, at the end of my senior year, I won state. What year is this? This is 2001. I graduated no one. Okay. So. That's- I, so I stand up at the sports banquet, and I said, y'all got to call me Broadway Ben Mintz, because just like the great Joe Namath, I walk the walk, and I talk the talk when we won state after I guaranteed it. And uh, yeah, I got to find footage of that. Somebody's no, got to no. have it. But, uh, yeah, so that was my one athletic So mark. you're a state champion Yeah, state champion. So the last eight Ain't years. nobody could ever take that away from yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're only competing with about five or six other schools, but so what? Uh, nobody can take it. I still have the ring, and I uh, actually have my finally my twenty year reunions in three weeks. So I'm go- going back. So. so did you? Did anything happen with tennis after that, or was that yeah. kind of just like that was, like, it. That was <laughs> it? All right. All there right. was no there was no college aspirations whatsoever. I knew I wasn't that athletic. I made the best of it. Yeah. I was top twenty five in Louisiana, and I uh, got a state title. You're like the Matt Mark of tennis. Like you just kind of just won the shit and just. Yeah, you know, went on. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So, but yeah, it's fun to bring up that memory though. That mad, that match was my one shining moment. So you go to Ole Miss after that. How so did the that biggest, decision come. So that was the hardest decision of my one of them in my life uh, between LSU and Ole Miss. I couldn't make my mind up. Usually in high school, you decide where you're going to college. Eli Manning's there at that time. Yeah. So you basically usually decide by April. You have to decide like your senior year where you're going. I walk across the stage, graduation, he's either going to LSU or Ole Miss. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't figure it out till late June. Oh, that Eli? Well, just that I was going. And so my oh, mom, my li- listen to this move my mom pulls that, con- that convinces me to go to Ole Miss. Dude, this is crazy. 
She, my mom wanted me to go to Ole Miss so bad for the Mississippi Sider family. She left on my pillow one night the Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken. I don't know what that means. And it was It's this fa- real famous poem. Okay. But it was all about basically the premise of it was everyone you know is going to LSU do something different, go to Ole Miss. That was the premise of her doing Oh, that, that. was some deep shit. Yeah, it was real deep. Yeah. And uh, so I decided, like, late June, finally, I'm going to Ole Miss. I mean, it was that close between LSU and what Ole do you, Miss. So that's what fa- – I mean, don't get me wrong. I well, know that can't be all – yeah, but – Well, Oxford's smaller, and, like, coming from Monroe, I thought it was a fit. Like, I thought Baton Rouge might overwhelm me a you little You knew bit. a lot of people going to Baton Rouge? I knew a ton of people who went to Baton Rouge. I only knew, like, two that were at Ole Miss. I went to Ole Miss, and I had one Monroe friend a year above me. And uh, But that was kind of the point of it, though. You yeah. Know, you know what I mean? You felt like that. Yeah, I kind of thought that was the point of it. And then, like, a lot of Monroe people came behind me. Like, Monroe started sending a lot of Ole Miss people uh, behind that. But, yeah, I moved up there. I knew, knew uh, you know, one or two people, and it was uh, – And just met all new people. Yeah, I just met all, just met all new people. So, Mincy, Mincy, man. So, you know, going from Monroe to, you know, Ole Miss, did you feel like – Looking back at it, that was the best decision for you? Or you well, you, I wouldn't have thought it was until uh, what ended up happening. It, it was such a long and winding road at Ole Miss that I feel like I had three totally different college experiences. That's how long how, I was there. Was a long I mean, I, I, I went in with Eli Manning and I graduated with Chad Kelly. You know, I was there from 01. My first three years were like the frat years. I pledged ATO and I lived in the frat house. Man, it's Chad yeah. Kelly. The what years? Chad Kelly was not like not even that long. Twenty fifteen. I went back. We'll God. get there. I went back. I, I went no, back. Yeah, I'm sure it'll Eli take a while. Already had two Super Bowls by then. Yeah. Yeah. God. No, I, my freshman year was Eli's. All right, Chalice, My bad. I was just. I'm, I'm, no. Well, so what happened? I thought I was in. I was in community college for five years. Yeah. You know, like I thought. I thought that was bad. no. I didn't. Well, I don't know. What really happened was, uh, I, like, I was there. So my first four years were like your typical frat years. I lived in the frat house. I was at ATO. A lot of Louisiana, New Orleans ATOs actually uh, up there that uh, live down here now. Uh, you met a lot of dudes from Jesuit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah there were a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but so my first four years, I was and I was like a year or two away from like I was kind of going slower on the graduating thing, and then uh, I, I found poker. Bud Light sucks. They always sucked. Way before they were political, that was a beer we had to succumb to, because it was just around. That that beer never tasted good. Not not any year. I was not, in two thousand and fifteen. I wasn't saying that, but Bud Light. No, no. I was drinking a beater. 95 cows for the athlete that's inside of you. You don't got to worry about it. It, it. It's right there with all the lowest cow beers, like all the douchebags like Michelob and all that shit. It's in a can. You could crack it open, shotgun it to the face, you and your buddies. There's no boundaries on this a beater light, dude. They fight in the good light fight. It's the Luke Skywalker of light beer. You know, always just swinging that sword for a good cause, bro. I am, we, and I see people drinking tourist beer. I'm like, dude, why? Why? A beat of light. Respect your body. Funny thing was, I wasn't even making that much money for two years. I just loved it. I was obsessed with it. I loved the competition, the gambling. Right. And then the night that everything changed, it was, uh, I think it was like, I know it was April of tw- 2006. So I was 22. And I'm playing a twenty dollar tournament on party poker, twenty two dollar buy in. I got like five hundred bucks to my name. I'm a broke college kid, <laughs> and there's like twenty four hundred people in this tournament, and I'd never even final table the tournament or anything, and I just win this son of a bitch, dude. Twenty two dollar buy in, I win ten grand like that. Yeah. And at twenty two, you think ten grand, a million dollars? Yeah, no, I. St- I mean, I was like, I was like, I- I'll never forget. shit, Thir- shit, ten grand at thirty one. Yeah. Or ten grand now, hell. Yeah, bro. But but ten grand off twenty bucks, and I thought like I remember I just I like I was like right, right when I won that tournament I'm like I'm gonna be a pro poker player, yeah. like, you know like that yeah. was it. That was it. I remember I called my mom the next day to tell her about winning this tournament, and she was like a big time attorney and sent me to private schools and stuff, and you could just hear like the groan in her voice. She's just <laughs> like, oh no. Yeah. And uh, and I that's was that what first twenty four hours though. Oh, amazing! I remember I took all my friends out to Como Steakhouse, a super. Uh, great steakhouse. It took like eight people. They got asked to at the steakhouse or just steaks? 
What's up? I didn't know if they was it ass and steaks or ass and steaks. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 man. I just took about the steak. I went to steak. Okay, gotcha. No, no, it wasn't like uh, what's the strip club here that used to have? You could go eat steak. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, unfortunately, North Mississippi don't have any. Is it Visions? I forget which one. Memphis, had the that's wild. So like Platinum yeah. Plus and Pony back in the day were pretty. Yeah, wild. I mean, I, you know, um, but uh, but yeah. So I that changed the way I looked at life when I got that money that easily, and then that was the beginning of my book broker per career right there in 2006 how's all right first of all how's it how's your chair feel the chair feels amazing all right i feel good my posture feels good yeah 45 dollars yeah i'm, I'm a, am i supposed to look at you or the camera i think i'm doing yeah, you can do both, doing both. okay yeah no Five it just depends like if you look at me it's just like we just talking if you look there you kind of running like a randy savage promo okay. okay that's pretty much it but no like um so how does it how does it work like becoming a pro poker player? It's just if that's all you do for income and you don't have a job okay. or do anything. And so what was really going on then was I was like half ass in school, like taking one or two classes, but like all I was doing was playing poker. And so that's how I ended up being there so long. And I was just uh, playing a lot of online poker, and I start traveling the South Circuit, whether it be Tunica. I used to come. I played a lot at Harris. You were just so, finding where these tournaments yeah. were. Yeah, okay. I had Biloxi, Beauvage, Biloxi. You ever played at the Golden Moon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, dude, I was just there. That's where I evacuated for a minute after yeah. the storm. No, I played Golden Moon. Uh, I, that I shit was crazy. It was like being in a nice, nice place, but like tragedy was striking. Yeah, like yeah. all our houses were flooding. But it was like the nicest, like, casino. Dude, it was like, a, it was a, um, its own, like, reservation. Yeah, it's in Philadelphia, Mississippi. I actually was just there. I went by there this summer. After I got back from Vegas and played a little bit of poker and went to the Neshoba County Fair, it was pretty wild. Crazy. That oh place my. still popping? Dude, that Neshoba County Fair is... A, a, oh, a, no, I'm talking about... I think I almost texted you, like, you should come to this. Well, I don't know what that is. What is that? It's it's this Mississippi once a year. It's the, the largest outdoor party in Mississippi of the year. And it's like everybody builds. There's, like, like hundreds and hundreds of cabins. But there's, like, horse racing and Ferris wheel and music and then you got the politicians debating it's this whole the politicians are debating yeah it's like the, a, okay it's just a whole mississippi they're just trying to get it all in yeah it was just it was that was the first time i ever went it was it was nuts but uh the poker thing though i just got into poker i'm half ass in school for a long time and i'm like you know 20 or 24 hours from finishing but i just didn't care man once i started yeah. making real money uh, and I was making good money. I mean, like, I'm not saying I was getting rich, but I was making like a real solid living, just gambling, doing what I enjoyed. I didn't give a shit about school. Yeah. I didn't care at all. And finally I kept talking forever. Like I want to move to New Orleans. I want to move to New Orleans. I want to move to New Orleans. And I kept putting it off. And finally I made the plunge in the fall of 2009, baby. Okay. So what you, a time. <laughs> so you what? You mid twenties. I'm like 27. Okay. 26. So I moved down here. I uh, lived in the Soleil apartment complex where T Bob used to live too over there. Wait, where? Soleil off Chop. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lived there, but I moved down there, and I'm I'm psycho. Say I grew up. I've been a Saints fan the whole the whole way, and uh, I moved down there the fall. They win the Super Bowl. I went to eight games. Went to eight. Oh. The fall of nine. I moved down there. I went. I went to eight games. Uh, I went to all the playoff games. Went to the you know. The sports memory of being in the dome, the NFC Championship, oh. with Mark through the pick, most emotional, most emotional sporting event I've ever been to, and then my Super Bowl story is is great too. So I'm bro, I'm like pretty broke, and I'm up in Tunica playing World Series of Poker in, by Memphis. It's the week of the Super Bowl, and I like won my way into a five hundred and eighty dollar tournament. I like won like what's called a satellite, so I got in it for like sixty seventy bucks. And then I get fifth in the tournament for six grand on Thursday. I got I got the second I got the money, I just got Put it on the Saints. I booked a flight from Memphis to Miami. Oh, and I, I book no, I book a flight from Memphis to Miami. I was like, I don't give a crap. This money can come and go. This black and gold Super Bowl I've been waiting my entire life for, and I ain't missing it. So I bought a flight Memphis to Miami. I flew down there. I bought a twelve hundred dollar ticket. I was first row, upper deck. I was in this Colt section in Miami. Uh, they were all they were all nice though. Indian Midwest people are pretty, you know. Yeah, nice. it's like what you gonna. Yeah, yeah what you gonna yeah, do? But yeah, but no. So and yeah, and I was first row upper deck, and I was I was there for the Super Bowl. Holy and shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was, yeah. Bro, so it's I, fucking crazy how yeah. life is. Like yeah. you were you were basically broke. I didn't know I wasn't going. I wasn't going at all, and I hit that poker tournament three days before, 
And I knew I was like, whatever on the money. Like the money will come and go. Like I've been waiting my entire life. Did you bet on the Saints at that time? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. But I, yeah, I think I put two hundred bucks on it or something like that. Feel you. But yeah. uh, but just getting to see it, you know, I'll honestly say what was interesting. I think being at the NFC Championship and the emotion of the Superdome was better than being at the Super Well, Dome. that's one Super thing Bowl, I'll always I say too. That's one thing I'll always say too because I was actually I was in New I was actually I was eighteen. Yeah, I was eighteen or seventeen, one or two, and I was in New Orleans for the night that they played the Super Bowl. And I was at Fat Cats when Tracy Porter picked off Peyton Manning, okay? And uh, it was, man, when, seriously, bro, and it's so easy. You know how it's hard sometimes to, like, think about, man, what was the best moment in my life? You know how it's hard? Like, people, like, will sit there and be like, hmm, dude, I don't even have to think, bro. Still, still, we in 2023, bro. This is in 2010. I remember coming out of Fat Cats, 17, 18 years old, coming out of Fat Cats, Literally, I've never seen anything like it, and I'll probably never see anything like it again. The whole street, everybody's running out. And when I talk, when I say this, these next two words, same accord, everybody was on the same accord running out after we knew that we won the Super Bowl. Bro, hug, I'm, I'm, dude, I can feel it in my oh, head and my see, shoulders. I feel like I can see it. I feel it in my head and, my sh- and, and it's coming down here. Look, look at the goosebumps yeah. on me. Dude, like everybody was hugging, crying. Didn't matter who you were, nothing mattered. Um, everybody was just like, it was almost like, God, oh, I shouldn't compare this, but I have to because this is what I was going to say. It's almost like God it came. It's like Jesus. Oh, I, I get it, man. I thought it was like, I, I felt the same emotions. Uh, it, being Ooh. there, being there was like, uh, it was incredible. It was my favorite sport you've ever been to. But it wasn't like with all the New Orleans people. Even being there, you weren't in that, which yeah. you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was awesome. I was there and I was with a lot of my good friends. And I'll never forget it. Get, I mean, dude, I got to go to the Super Bowl and see the Saints win it. But it, it was like the NFC Championship emotion when you're in the Superdome with everyone and after. And, and that was an emotional balling, game. Everybody's balling. Yeah. You know, that was almost more emotional than like it's me being it's, at the Super Bowl. It's as simple as what I do. I always say this, bro. I know people that lived and died and didn't see the Saints win the Super Bowl. Oh. I know I know people that did. So, And I just, you, I just think about, like, this one person in specific was my stepmom's dad. He would always watch the Saints, always watch the Saints every single week. And it'd just be like that same reaction of, man, they're not worth the shit. You know, like that same like ending reaction. He passes away before they win a Super Bowl. Bro, that means something to me because, bro, like people went through it for the, this fucking football team, bro. Oh, yeah. They went through a whole life of, sh- of stress, like trying to be rewarded with enjoyment, but really being stressed out a lot. You know, and I Still think that's. To this day. Still to this day, we stress. Yeah, well, because it's been so long. Not I, even just that. It's just how the Saints play. Regardless, it's going to be a <laughs> yeah, heartbreak yeah, every right. game. Well, yeah. While we're at it, I actually have to mention this other Saints memory. Well, that I, I can't believe I skipped over in high school. So I was there when Oz Akeem dropped the punt. Too. So was I. Yeah, and that was uh, the Oz Akeem drop. There is, the, the, yeah. there is a God after all. Yeah. The call. One of the best, in my opinion, yeah. that's probably the best. That's top two best calls in Saints yeah. history. No, that, I, I wanted, that was like that. That was favorite childhood sporting event memory. For yeah, sure. for and that sure. was, and, and you know, because, I mean, you were, well, more, I mean, dude, look, you have to know how good the Rams were at that time. Oh, no, yeah, they couldn't, that, that year, like, it was off the Super Bowl year, they, their defense fell off a cliff that year, but they could score. Yeah, they could still, and the, the best show on turf. killing them, and then they blew the, you know, they're trying yeah. to blow it. And then I also, man, I'm that hard, man, in 06, when the Saints made the NFC Championship game, I drove to Chicago, oh. I froze my ass off in the snow. That was a hostile game. Dude, it was, man. They were gonna I don't finish forget that. Katrina started and yeah, stuff dude it was bad that, that stadium dude uh, it was it was it was bad but like i'm you know I've, I've been to all three saints nfc championship games i went to the super bowl i've been you know i've been a saints fan for you know whole so life. yeah you, I'm you yeah you well and it's just like that whole idea of like you know if, if something big going on with the saints bro like am i going to invest pretty much a lot of my money into this right now and it's a quick decision yeah you know what i'm saying like hey am i going to do this and you just do it and not a lot of people do so i mean I, I haven't been able to go. I went to one road Saints game. It was uh, in Minnesota. We got our ass kicked. You know, it was Kamara's rookie year. And um, when we had Adrian Peterson. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I went to the. We were all walking in that game thinking AP about to get 150 on these boys. Nothing. No. 
No, I've, I hadn't done so. I did the road, like, playoff games. The only My favorite road regular season game I went to, my, I convinced my mom and sister to do Thanksgiving at Jerry World. Okay. The year that, do you remember that game? Malcolm Jenkins stripped Roy yeah, Williams. Yeah, what a thrilling game that was. Yeah. yeah was that, that, so we actually, like, ate Thanksgiving. Like, dude, we got to the game early, and they had, like, a bunch of good food, and we, like, ate Thanksgiving. They don't play that clip enough of Malcolm Jenkins running down the field um, where, like, you know, dude, we were out that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you would have... That wouldn't have happened, bro. Like, the Saints would have – I forget what our record was at that time, but I remember that game, you know. Oh, it was thrilling. I remember Reggie Bush muffed the punt to let him get back in it. Yeah. I remember the Saints were winning, and I remember that was, like, what let them back. I remember that. Yeah. No, that was – Um, I was in the Burbank Commons. I remember I had to <laughs> – I got so drunk the night before in Dallas because the tickets were – my mom, like, made this whole big deal. Like, I'll come to Dallas, but you got to pay for the tickets because yeah. when I had some poker money. And, like, the tickets were – my mom was like, I've never been to an NFL game. I'm not sitting in the nosebleeds, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I literally had to just get – I had to get hammered. Bro, run that back. tickets cost me so much. Run that I back. I spent, like, 1500 Hey, and Roy Williams was a dog at this time, bro, for real. Hey, look how big he is, bro. All right, that's Tracy, and then here comes Malcolm. Oh, wow. What a fucking football wow. player, bro. Wow. Still had Vilma on the squad. Dude. See, that's the problem with the Saints now. We get none of these type plays no more. Dude. We get none a, of these type plays serious. no more. Hey, shout out Tracy Porter, bro. I said he'd come on the podcast, so we're going to have we be lining him up. And I'm going to tell you, Ben, nobody's talked. I'm serious, bro. I've not seen one interview. Have I looked that hard? No. But I have not seen one interview with Tracy Porter since he picked Peyton Man. Nobody's talked to yeah, Tracy. Yeah, I rock the Porter jersey. Dude, yeah, and, and you want to talk about. All right, you know how you could say, like, hey, without this guy, it wouldn't happen? Iconic, man. Iconic. You can't. You can't. He picked off the far pass too. They have some champions. We do not win a Super Bowl. He was that. He he was both picks. No, he was. Yeah. He got the far we, one you over the middle, tell too. the story of the Saints winning a Super, Super Bowl, Bowl without speaking about Tracy Ford. And I'm glad that I caught it on the back end because, godly, bro, like, I got a picture of him hanging up uh, in the house. Well, when he comes here, we're going to take a picture with him. And I'm going to cry. Frame it. No, we're going to frame it. No, I here. can't wait to see it. I'm going to cry. We're going to frame that picture. I'm going to cry. So, so after the Super Bowl, <laughs> oh, God. so we get we get back. So this is, this is when my NOLA life takes off. Like, I was – so I, I had a poker buddy of mine who was awesome working with me in poker – I go on, like, I have, like, probably 20K to my name after the Saints Super Bowl, maybe 15 or 20. It's more money I had my whole life. I yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but that, you know, like a little bit of a roll. I go on this heater that started in, like, February, like, right off the Saints Super Bowl. Like, I'm, like, winning, like, a lot. I think I had it, you know, I, I built it up. I was doing really well in, like, February, March. Okay, but can we talk about real quick that, I'm sorry, yeah, but go you got to realize nobody I knew was really betting at this time. yeah. Well, we were. I got into it. I was like fifteen or sixteen. I mean, like, <laughs> dude, like, yeah, dude, like, oh, I've been betting on football since, like, I mean, I've been betting on football since, yeah, literally. I think I was like fifteen. Did you just meet somebody, or you yeah, just went into yeah, it? I knew, I knew somebody that okay. they could play some and all that. I mean, I bet ten bucks. No, what like, I mean is that did you meet somebody that like got you into it, or you just yeah. like? You, uh, I just it was, was it a, the it was, poker. No, was it was it, in high school. All our friends were into it. Okay, and they did fancy football and they bet on the games. I also yeah, don't want to finish. It was a thing. I also don't want to finish this. M- right. Monroe, of course. Yeah, I was about to say. I also, Monroe, they're degens. I mean, obviously. I want to really emphasize the people I know from Monroe, like, for real, bro. And I didn't meet nobody from Monroe ever in my life. I never met anybody from up north Louisiana ever in my life until I got to Baton Rouge because I went to BRCC. I never grad- I mean, I didn't even get an associate's degree, bro. I was out there for five years. But let me tell you something, bro. I was getting it in. And the people I met from Monroe up there, they the type of motherfuckers, bro. They get drunk, black, and I mean blackout. Yeah. I mean, I mean an incoherent you've never seen before. I knew dudes that be pissing in the corner of houses, jumping out of windows, just like some reckless incoherency. And they and it was dudes from my, like they just pa- they drank, like they didn't have a liver. I'm so telling you, a, bro. What's a good indicator that you can look and tell somebody's from my road? I think it's the tone. I think it's like the gravelly voice, like I have. Like Monroe, I've got it's it's really like a Mississippi Delta Monroe mix. Yeah, you that North Louisiana like draw, you know. I think there's certain things about them too. Like I know a few dudes, and like they're very um hmm. A lot of most of them are big hunters. Which I was I'm about not. to say hunting. I'm not, but I'm not. But also they're like they're very like uh. Somewhat old school, like they're not gonna be in with the new times. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're You're very not old. See flashy stuff. No, not a lot flashy. Of truck, people drive a lot of trucks. A lot of trucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, it, is it the jeans with the cowboy boots too? 
Are we? Yeah, well, about that. Very I don't serious. think that distinguishes. You wouldn't be able to distinguish. I think the most thing that distinguishes people from Monroe is the voice. And the I voice. think it's just everybody's. Nuts. And it's not necessarily like Mince's voice. It all. There's another one too, the way it's like a little deeper. Real country swing though, like it's deep. Yeah, you know? I know some dudes who have deep voices from Monroe, and like it, it just. I don't know. I've never heard anything like it. It just seems yeah. like. I mean, if you're from there, you either gamble or drink they a lot. Were, you know, everybody's drinking. It's always characters that are to, to, drinking. to success. Yeah. Drinking. It's like a jungle sometimes. It make me wonder how I survive. So many summers I get high that keeps me going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It make me wonder how I survive. So many summers I get high that keeps me going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It make me wonder how I survive. So many summers I get high that keeps me going under. From, from 2009 or 10 till 13 or 14, it got freaking wild down I, mean, I think 2011 was my wildest year ever for yeah me. i mean i went to like i'm a psycho widespread panic fan i went to 32 panic shows that year jesus i was God. like no i would get the schedules out like one of my favorite things and you, you you know this about me you know how i'm like kind of everywhere all the time you yeah, know no, i like, get what you're saying yeah like i would get these poker tournament schedules out and the widespread panic tour out and figure out how i could go to shows and play poker right i was like and i'd end up at like halloween in chicago and i'd end up at la and vegas I mean, dude, I, I even ended up at Ames, Iowa one night. Like, that's how crazy this year got. And you could see where, where this is going. Where are you like, staying at? Like, the days in? Or yeah, staying? a lot of that or with friends or just maneuvering. But the thing is, is, like, this lifestyle was not sustainable. It yeah. was not. And, like, I had a lot of money at the time. And then in 2012, I kind of had a little bit of a worse poker year. And then in, tw in 2013... Was still partying hard in NOLA. Money was starting to get lower and lower. <laughs> yeah. And then in early of 2014, I'll just, I hit my bottom. Yeah. And I look up, it was like April or May of 2014. I look up and I had had like 100, over 100K poker roll down. I was down to like 500 bucks. Oh my God. No. And what happened, this Damn, was the, on my body. You felt it. Yeah. Body. So the, the biggest moment that really changed uh, the arc of my life was. One of my best friends in Oxford, who I, you didn't get to meet, unfortunately. My buddy Elliot Willard calls me. He, we have this phone call on April of 14 where he calls me out. He's like, you've said forever you want to come back and finish school. Well, I'm back. I've got a house right right by the square, two bedrooms. He's like, you get up here. We'll figure it out. You just get here because, like, you're out of control partying. You're broke right now. You're on a real bad path. You need to get out of New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans. You know, it's like the yeah. house of the rising sun. Well, yeah, I just stay in the crib. Yeah, so yeah. he was like, you need to get out of there. So, like, I knew I was leaving, and I went nuts for Jazz Fest 2014. I just, like, partied for, like, two weeks. I knew it was the end, and I went to every day of the festival, out till 5 a.m. every night, yeah. you know, all that. And then I felt like I was, like, crawling up I-55 in the fetal position going back to Ole Miss. Yeah. I was, like, dead broke going yeah, back. You felt like Jonah Hill in uh, Wolf of Wall yeah, Street. Yeah, man. I mean, it was, like, dude. I Leonardo, was, Leonardo DiCaprio. I was, like, just crawling back, and then I went back. And I had about a year worth of school left, and I started that in summer of 14. And that's why the joke about me finishing with Chad Kelly. Gotcha. I knew, and I knew, like, in my head, that was the freeze Yeah, 21 zero. hours left. Yeah, and Ole Miss was good. It was yeah. during the freeze year. I was like, it'll be fun because we're good. Yeah. And so I was there for both Bama wins. And I was, and then my lowest point, but not a low point that actually helped me, it's a long, special fall from 75th in the World Series, Maine, to making salads and pizzas at Proud Larry's for $7.50 oh, or 8 God. bucks an hour when I'm back in college. And that humbled the crap out of me. So I was working a part-time job doing that 20 hours a week and finishing school. And, like, I remember I was, like, embarrassed to tell them because I was, like, built up in the poker world. I was, like, embarrassed to tell people. I, was I like, feel that, yeah. But there was nothing to be embarrassed about. I hadn't had a job in 10 years. Yeah. It's good that I could, like, show up on time. Like, poker and the gambling world desensitized me to money I know so what much. you're saying already. Yeah. I already know and what you're like saying. it was, like, going back to school and being a broke college yeah. kid was what – and that's what humbled me when I'd like been on this pedestal party and hard poker. And I think that's what prepared me for what came after that is because I'd already got to a point and then crashed yeah. very, very hard. What got so, you on radio? So I got really lucky. I was at Ole Miss for a year. I finished school. No clue what I was going to do with my life. I have 2.00000, bare minimum in finance. Don't know what I'm going to do. And my guy, Sean Fox, who does radio in North Monroe. I know of him. Yeah. He, I'm at a, I'm at my buddy's grandfather's funeral, and right after it, I take a ride with Sean. It's like October 15. He goes, "What do you think about moving to Shreveport?" And I was like, 
the first thing I think is, well, there's Horseshoe Bozier there, so I can play poker. That's the first thing I think. What he said. But uh, he said, uh, he said, look, there's this job. They want me to do sports radio in Shreveport. If I got a wife and kid, I don't want to leave Monroe for it. I'm going to recommend you for this job, even though you don't have experience. He's like, you got a funny personality and great sports knowledge. I think you'd be good. I I looked at him in the eyes and I was like, I'm in immediately. I was like, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. So I interviewed for this job. I get it. And I get a three-hour radio show when I have no experience. Imagine how hard this is. Right. The first day, it's December 14th of 2015, I got this, like, ten pages of notes. Because, I mean, I, like, and I'm talking so fast in the beginning that I had to get Sean on it, like, four minutes in. Yeah, I'm yeah, so, yeah. I'm so nervous. And that, that was mixing up with Mints. Okay, this was yeah. that era. I was in Shreveport and Bozier Sports Radio. It's about where, what year is this? This is the end of 2015. Okay. And and let's let's just call it what it is. That show stunk the first nine months, boys. But three hours a day, it's longer than Braveheart every day. I'm like and I'm like trying to fill se- trying to fill segments. I'm getting. I want to know who. I, where the people the people that were listening to you for three hours. Where they at? Uh, I got one. My, one of my P1s in South Louisiana. Like Boy, I'd like Par- to meet him. Yeah, Parfait. I'll <laughs> yeah, love him. He's yeah. Saints season ticket. We'll meet him and say he has a huge Saints tailgate. Do what you want. We'll go by it. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. So uh, he's been there for the whole journey from day one to, to where we are now. But honestly, I call it like it is. I suck for nine months. And when I realized doing radio, and this is something you've figured out too, you've been really good about this, you can't fake passion. Right. And when you're doing, talking about, like, when I'm talking about Louisiana Tech's practice report with some beat writer, it's obvious I don't give a damn. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I'm just trying to fill the airspace. But when I'm talking about gambling or food or yeah, music yeah. or fantasy football or – Find what you love. Yeah. They, that people feel it, and you, you, you've, you've that's a lot of what you've done, and so I made that show. Like I was like, you know what? I don't care what every other person's doing in sports radio. This is my show, and we're gonna do fancy football. We're gonna talk about point spreads, and I'm gonna talk about going to concerts, and I'm gonna do, you know, whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I just was like, I don't care what the norm is at all. Yeah, like, there's a million of those. I'm just this is mine. Right. And what I ended up doing was it evolved into just being like, you know, I talk about poker. I talk about. You know what? I just made it my own brand. And about nine months in, I started getting pretty good. And I started having relationships. Uh, Josh Booty was the first person who discovered me, by the way. Josh yeah. fucking Booty. Yeah, he was the first. He, yeah. uh, he, I got him to come on one time randomly. And we had like a really good segment. And he called me that night. He's like, I don't know who you are, but like, you're the man. Let's do a show together. And yeah. I was sitting in bed. I was like, dude, I grew up watching this guy. Right. Like, what, what is going on? Right. And we ended up having a show and through him, I met a lot of people uh, and networked. And then I did play-by-play for Airline High School for four years. They're 5A. And, I mean, I get more hype than Gus Johnson does calling high school football. I'm talking, man, I freaking – I didn't like it. I loved it. And I missed it even when I was in New York with Barstool. That's how much I enjoy – you know, I grew up going to high school. Monroe yeah. was real big, like Neville and West Monroe and all that. And – uh I got one story I'm going to share about the, the high school. So here, this is the this is my best high school football calling game. So 2017 playoffs, second round, airlines playing Santa Ma, Santa Ma. Is that how you say it? Santa Ma. I would. I, I'm going to say it wrong because I'm from the okay. parish, but well, I call them Santa Ma. Okay. Well, I'm down there in the sticks of Gonzalez. They got this place called the Pit. That's their stadium. So if you're like visiting radio, you're lower than scum of the earth. You're like top left of the press box. Me and my buddy, like we got you know as much room as, as this table. Yeah. So that's a th- nice table. Yeah. Th- oh yeah, that's a good table. Thanks. So they're uh. So parents. Santa Ma, like I mean, dude, people are loaded. Like it's South Louisiana. They they were like the five seed and one loss. They were their big year. We're, airlines an underdog. So third quarter, it's 2013 airline. And our, our best receiver takes a jet sweep for like a 78-yard touchdown. And I'm losing my mind on the air. Look, it's a new touchdown and your new score is airline 27, Santa Mont 13. All of a sudden, I look up and this like 60-year-old Cajun man's walking toward me. And I don't think anything of it. <laughs> yeah. He walks up to me. Yeah. Wow. And slaps the crap out of me on the shoulder. Just slaps the like piss at me and then my mic is hot i'll get you the clip for sure my mic is hot (laughs) he goes he goes boy i don't care what the score is the way you're hollering they can hear you all the way in knowledge (laughs) and all the airline coaches were by me in the booth going nuts they could hear us stomping so then i'm so flustered i go from like a 20 i'm like airline kicker on the field (laughs) kick is your point (laughs) kick is good your new score airline 28 cinema 13 and uh, i got the clip it's the funniest thing 
and uh, we ended up winning the game. But that yeah. was that was the highlight of my my four years of high school. Man, I'm that. looking at where your chair started and where it's at now, bro. If you didn't think that Mince's chair was about to move completely off the rug, bro, that's the type of energy hey, you're dealing no, with. No, that's real right passion. Now. It's dude, real. Airline, passion, you understand? Bro. That's my favorite, dude. That airline. No, that was. <laughs> I miss calling the games, man. I loved. Well, 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 Mince, who was your favorite player to call him? You know, I know you had to have like one particular. Well, dude, player. my dude that I talked about that Kobe McGee who had the long, he's the one who had the 78 yard jet sweep for yeah. touchdown. He played for Northwestern State, the Demons. But he, dude, he was my dude. Like, he, a, yeah. like, like the day, his national signing day, everybody was at Airline celebrating, and he, like, thanks his family and thanks the coaches and thanks the team. And then at the end, he's like, and I got to thank Ben Mitz. No way. Yeah. yeah. And that was your guy then. Yeah, that was your guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. My, that's my dude. But I did four. So I do four years of Airline Radio and mixing it up with Mitz got – you know, I think it got to its ceiling in Shreveport Bossier, you know, and I was making, you know, if you're making a living doing something you love, but there's a lot of stuff that goes with it that Devin deals with too. Like, you know, it's not just I'm doing sports radio. I'm out hustling, doing sales. You got to collect money. Yeah, you're trying you, to get by. Dude, it's, yeah, and collect, yeah, it's. People look at things that, and, and just, and especially today's day, if, if, if you see somebody popping on the internet, for whatever reason in your head, you think they got money, and that's just not the case. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you're still trying to get by. Oh, yeah. No, 2016, my first year, I made $14,000, bro. Yeah. First year sports radio in Shreveport. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I would, like, I was, like, going back to Monroe to be home on weekends to save money. Like, that's how broke I was. Uh, and I got it to look. I mean, I made a solid living through 19. I'm not sitting here saying I was getting rich. I think I was making, like, 50 or 60K, though, getting yeah. to do some I enjoy. Yeah. Anyway, I knew that it was almost at the end after four years because I was like, I don't want to be in Treeport the rest of my life. This right. has gotten to where it gets. So March of 2020, this is right before COVID, that week I get a call that like the Monday of the COVID week, we're letting you, we're letting you go after four years. And my immediate honest reaction was like, I wasn't even phased. Like yeah. I was just like, I was probably honestly leaving. like, Hey Brandon, I, like I made it what I could for yeah. four years. I didn't want to be here forever. I already was planning on doing one more airline season and leaving in December. Right. So I was like, not even like that phased by it. You know, I was just like, whatever, what will be, will be. Well, the next 24 to 48 hours were real crazy because I have a lot of great relationships through ESPN Baton Rouge like you do. And I had a few job offers immediately, Jackson, and then Jordy Collada, uh, who used to do him and T-Bob. Shout, shout out Jordy Collada. Shout out Jordy. Jordy Collada so much, man. Yeah, hey, oh, yeah. I still go on there every Friday. Uh, yeah, he, it, yeah. yeah, he calls me. It's uh, So Ole Miss is at UL Monroe in baseball in Monroe, which is crazy. And 10 minutes before first pitch Tuesday night, he calls me and said, I want you to be, like, the producer number three on OTB with me and T-Bob. And I just took it on the phone. Yeah. And, like, I was like, oh, I'm only employed 24 hours. And then I just get loaded at, at ULM. We grilled out, and I just get bombed that night, taking shots at Enox, all that. And then the next day, COVID shuts the world down. Yeah. So, like, I lose my – everybody has hiring freezes. Everybody in radio goes to trouble because nobody has money. Yeah. So Basically I'm like, like Katrina. Yeah, it's like – as big of a stop in local life as Katrina yeah. was. And so I'm like sitting there thinking the next week in Shreveport, like, what am I going to do during COVID? You know, I felt like I was like, well, if ESPN Baton Rouge tried to hire me, they probably will again in a few months when it gets better by football. If they already yeah. tried and the Gordy rush had okayed it. So I was like, well, where do I want to go during COVID? And South Louisiana was getting torched because I was down here for that Mardi Gras. I never caught it. But, you know, Baton Rouge. Oh, I quit my job. Not to go into my story, no, oh, yeah. but that – I mean, I went on the streets in Mardi Gras 2020, uh, and that's when I did my interviews. All I had to see was 1,000 likes. That was it. And I quit my job after that Mardi Gras interview video. I quit my job in February of 2020. I was a manager. I mean, I was making fucking 90 grand a year. And I quit my job right there, and then COVID hit the next month. And for whatever reason, it just made sense to me that COVID hit because that, that gave me a chance to, uh, to run the show because everybody was on the computer. Yeah. So to run the stream show, and that's when I started the call-in show. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, what happened with me, that's cool. That's cool. I respect it. It is so weird. I uh, was trying to figure out what to do, and I was like, for the third time in my life, let's go back to Oxford, Mississippi again. Because during COVID, it sounds like small town, chill, good place to be during COVID. Yeah. And so it was hilarious online poker re-blows up during COVID because everybody's at home doing nothing. Right. So it's like, I was up in Oxford. I'm like, is this 2006 or 2020? Like, if I progressed as a yeah. human, I'm just sitting here playing online poker like I did when I was 23. Yeah. And But that Oxford time, 
was really important because that's when I changed everything about how I lived. I was like 310 pounds at that point, and COVID was hitting obese people real hard. And I was getting drunk every night playing poker. Playboy Marty was up there hanging out. And in late April, I decided not to quit drinking forever. That wasn't the plan. I was like, I'm going to quit for three months, and I'm going to use this COVID time to lose weight and take my health more seriously because COVID was really hitting overweight people hard. Okay. And so I started eating healthy and running and all that. And in, like, mid-June, like, all this brain fog lifted. It took six or seven weeks. I mean, I was 37. I've been partying for 20 years, like, hard, you know? And uh, – I started feeling like sharp, like when I was a kid, like Rain Man with numbers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in July, Jimmy Ott, who you're friends with too. Love. Yeah, love Ott. Ott calls me in July. Love Ott. Ott calls me in July saying, I got this new night show and I want you to be the co host. And I said, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in Baton Rouge to the, next de- the next day. And man, all I'd wanted, like, I mean, I was a Shreveport Bozier guy. Like, all I wanted, ESPN Baton Rouge was like the job. That was it. You know, like, I've been. I've been going on with T Bob since 17 and they yeah. knew me from gambling and stuff. But that was all I wanted. You know, like I was like, I was hoping I'd work here five years. Yeah. I was so pumped to be in Baton Rouge because that was the next step. And I was down there for a couple months. It was like my first football season. And, you know, I still put it out like, hey, I'm not drinking. Like, don't be on me drinks, et cetera. And then the Barstool thing just comes out of the sky in October. And, and that so- was just completely like not even. It wasn't even Obviously, a thing. not even a thing. Not and dude, the random. Did stuff, you know Barstool? I, I I followed Dave and Big Cat, and that was it. I didn't know. I just and always, honestly, that's about. And I remember that time. That's about where m- most people from like we didn't, we didn't know. No, like very few people I talked to knew about Barstool. Yeah. I remember the first time I found it. I found them off that merch. I didn't find them off a of Big Cat or Portnoy. I found them off that merch. And I remember saying, damn, this fucking merch, bro. Like, I ordered one shirt, and I was like, damn, bro, this fucking merch is super nice. You know what I'm saying? What is this? What is Barstool? Next thing you know, I look at, and I find, the next person I found was Portnoy, and I found him doing, like, the pizza reviews and shit like that. And literally, the next person I found after that was Big Cat. And then I'm, So, dudes, that time right there is when I started following Barstool. Yeah, I, I watched during during COVID, I was watching Dave do the pizza review. Like, a unboxing. few months before they found you is when yeah. I... Yeah, I was. Doing, I watched him doing the unboxing, um, but what was crazy about the Barstool thing was uh, Playboy Marty Martin. He the first time I met him at a party in fall of uh, twenty eighteen in Shreveport. That night we got drunk at some party, and he said his dream was to be a producer at Barstool. And I, when I got hired by Barstool, I got him on. Oh, and wow. Yeah, and he ended up being there three years. Yeah, But like, Marty's he a great literally, dude. The first night I met him, he said, that's my dream. And when I got hired, I asked if they'd take Marty, and they took him. And we moved up there. Y'all would do already producing content? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was the one. And then the funny thing, the ripples in the pond of life, the video. With the ripples in the what or what? Okay, you know how you sometimes think like how everything would be different if one thing didn't happen? Like Drew Brees, Miami thing is the biggest example. Like skipping a rock. Yeah, but like, you know, like Drew Brees, if he didn't fail that physical in Miami. Right. He doesn't end up in NOLA. Nick Saban doesn't go to Bama. We get Dante Culpepper. Yeah. And like Nick Saban never goes to Bama. Right. But, like, so the one that was so fascinating to me was Marty was at a wedding in New Orleans the night before. He walked into our house in Baton Rouge three minutes before that video when Ole Miss won. If he'd have come ten minutes later, no video. No, no video. No, no, no barstool. No video, no barstool. And just so we know, the video, Ben Mintz. It's just me ripping the hotty toddy. Yeah. Just fired up when Ole Miss beat Kentucky by one at OT. Honestly, when I did it, I was pumped, but. You know, kind of thinking so, so, you know, just messing around. You all right, know, a couple kinda. things here. I know we had an hour and 30 minutes. I understand oh, I that. I but no, I know. Right? And I just want to make sure that we good on the cameras because that one will get hot. But all right, with that being said, I do want to go into a couple of things. I want to get to these questions. And then also, just like Barcelona in general, since you've been there, you know, how is, I mean, how has that been? Has there ever been times where you said like, you know, hey, fuck this? You know what I'm saying? The New York thing was tough. Okay. The New York the first thing. stint. Yeah, the, well, just the New York thing. I'm a Southern guy. I've never been in New York. I've been in New York one night of my whole life, and I moved up there not knowing anyone. And, you know, it's... Uh, Stop right right there. Never been in New York in life. Imagine that, bro. Well, one once. I've I, I never been. So I was pretty pay, passing through in 2011 yeah. once. Okay, yeah. Uh, obviously. Uh, but, uh, but I could feel that, bro. That's... I don't know how to, like... I don't know how... what. They into I don't know how they think about me or you know so no, I, I feel that it's different and yeah. the political stuff's hot and I'm not getting into that but it's just like a different it's a different deal up there and uh, you know that was tough on me being away from my family and friends and like a totally different 
you know, thing. Yeah. But I knew it was such a big opportunity. I had to do it. You right. Did. I mean, I'm sure you saw like how, dude, I was always in the South because I didn't like New York. You yeah. know, even when I was living there, I was here half the time. Right. Just because I was like uncomfortable. Um, but it was kind of one of those things. I just knew it was a big opportunity. Dave actually told me, you can either live in the South or move here. We'll give you more money if you come here. And at first, I was like, oh, dude, I get to live in the South. I'll be with Barstool. And two days later, I was like, dude, you just grinded in Bozier for four years. You got a chance to go to New York and be part of Barstool. Quit being a lazy bitch and get your ass up there. You know, like right. this is too big uh, uh, of an opportunity. And so, I, you know, I, I made the plunge and did, you know, did two years up there and, did the best I could with it, I think. Vince, you are a funny motherfucker, bro. Like, For real, dude. When, like when you got it sideways like this, I don't know what's going on. What is yeah, going no, on right there? there I, right? I, I have no answer. Yeah. I have no clue whatsoever. To be real, I'm more mad at the person that gave you the equipment to crack it open down the middle, because they kind of felt like, what, what, what is going on here? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, man. But what, <laughs> I, but what I do know, what I will say, is the Omaha thing, I was really uncomfortable getting bagged on that much by millions of people because it's the first time I dealt with it. But right. Then, but then it became so popular and, like, funny. And then I did the video where I jinxed Jack Lighter's no-hitter when the home yeah. run went by me. And, like, I was, like, afraid to walk in the stadium the next day. Like, I was like, dude, like, this, like, I was getting, dude, I didn't know Vandy fans could be Felt like a heel in dude, WWE. I was all but getting, no, I didn't quite get death threats, but, like, Vandy fans were that mad at me. <laughs> yeah. They hated me that much. And, uh, you know, it was, like, weird. You got that, like, anxiety in your stomach. Like, I can't even, like, be here. This is so yeah. awful and weird. Yo. But then, like, I went on, Dave had me on the Portnoy show, and I thought he was about to just ream me for all this stuff because it was, like, I was losing him all this money. And he was just like, I mean, see, like, I, 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 you know, I don't know where I found you. I couldn't have found you out of a million people if I tried. And when he said that, I was like, oh, this is actually all good. What is it like? What is it like? His like his demeanor and how he talks to you and shit. Like, do you feel like he talks to you pretty real, or does it, do you feel it, like it's it, yeah, yeah? It, it, well, I think now we're really good. Okay, I understand it's, that. It's different now. Okay, I understand that because like, there's one thing I do notice about up north people. They'll talk to people from down here like we kind of dumb. You know what I'm saying? Oh, or like, that's or how like, he always you know, talks to Walker. Yeah, like, or even like people, yeah, like people will think looking at us like we dumb. You know, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm as bright as a fucking bulb. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'll see him talking about people from down here and I'll be like, you know, that dude ain't even that stupid. You know what I'm saying? So like, is that like a common thing amongst Northern yeah, people? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's just the South thing. You know, you hear me talk. And, like, I feel like they, you know, like today, I think Dave views me as a straight cartoon character. Like, I, I, maybe not anymore, but, like, my mannerisms and energy and stuff, <laughs> like, I think he's just, like, because he's, you know, and you know this, dude, how many crazy characters are there all over the South? They're everywhere. I but always they, say that. Yeah, but they, but they hadn't seen him. Correct. They, and that's they, what, that's what, I, it's just like a puzzle to me. Yeah, it's like. Dave's like in Massachusetts and Michigan, guy, he hadn't been around. It's like, bro, this. name nobody. I could, New Orleans, they're yeah, everywhere. Yeah, like, yeah, dude, I'm I could not, bring you around I, anybody a, at my family's house, yeah. bro. They gonna fucking crack you up. No, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know? But it's like, he hadn't been exposed to that. So to, to. To to him, I'm like, yeah, like you know what I mean. Like I think that was, uh, that was a lot of it. Yeah, and, but you know, he used to me obviously he really messed with me a whole lot, a bunch of times. But you get used to it. Uh, you know, you, you get thick skin. You realize like, like absolutely, like all these people would always get on me on my DMs. Like you don't know, like you are the Joker. Everyone's laughing at you. I'm like. Right. Dude, I do exactly what I want for a living. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm the joke. I don't give a crap. I right. hope, I hope like I you're stay not dumb. The like, I hope I stay the joke forever. You understand you know? the perception. Yeah. You understand the perception. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that's the point. Like you got to just be able to right. deal with it. Right. Right. Yeah, and and dude, that's something I learned in the car business, bro. You're gonna have people that belittle you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Some people will come up to me, you know, uh, trying to buy something. I wouldn't give them the price, and they'd be like, you know, really like disrespectful. You know, like really belittle me, like, and it's just like. That kind of groomed me to deal with, like, what anybody says. Yeah. You know, like, whatever you say, bro, hey, that's whatever you My say. My Twitter rule, because you get this, too, because you're super in public eye. If they have less than 50 followers, they don't count. Yeah. Because they're burners. Right. If, so if so, anytime I'm getting hate from someone, oh, I was, I'll, I'll just glance at the follower count. If it's 50 or less, bro, just when I does first, it. That mean, if they're afraid to put their name behind it. They don't count. Right. So that's my thing with it. And all the hate I get from burners. <laughs> yeah. I guess you don't count being at 40,000 dead. Well, no, he's saying under 50 peop you, people. People have under 50. Right. It's Joe, all these fake count. accounts. Yeah, they don't no. count. It's like that's, burners. That's, a Joe, that's what Joe Show does, bro. Joe Show, will, he will turn it. He'll take a car that's driving straight, and then he'll turn it around. That's what <laughs> Joe yeah, So Joe. that's what I learned to do, though, because, I mean, I got a lot of, I mean, I got 
it, I mean, you've dealt with it too. I got a lot of hate yeah. for a while. And I'm like super energetic and out there. So like the thing with me is like most people like me, but the ones that don't, they really don't. Right. Because I drive them crazy because I'm in your face ripping hotty totties. And right. like, I mean, I, I turn it up. And so like it was weird, you know, but I got used to all that. You know? I got a piss. Mince, I want to get to these questions. Okay, cool, cool. I, I, the only other thing I want to comment on is uh, <laughs> the current. Uh, we get after the questions. I got one other thing. All right. Well, um, we get the questions first. Let's let's. Uh, it's up to you, bro. I want you to be able to pick them. Um, they write. For y'all to go for it, man. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, ask him why he doesn't take poker more seriously. He is a decent player. Okay, I was really good, and honestly, there's an interesting thing going on. This actually gets into the premise of what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm going through a thing right now that is so fascinating. Like I just turned 40, and I obviously got through that whole Barstool scandal. But there's a thing where I feel like the first act, like that was the end of the first act of life, and this is the beginning of the second. There's a vibe that everything has changed in the last three or four months, including how I live day to day. Every I view life differently. I eat differently. I take care of my health more. And it's weird. I feel like I've lost my passion for poker a little bit lately. I'm like not as like, it's like that was part of the first act. And I'll still play, but it's like I used to like love it. And now I'm not really like enjoying it as much. And I'm, let's not kid ourselves. I've been getting the crap kicked out of me. And that makes it less that, enjoyable. Yeah. So it's probably results oriented. Uh, but I'll still play. There's a big tournament at Harris, New Orleans coming up next week on Poker Graw. Uh, I'll be in there. I'll continue to play some on the side. I'll still play the main. But as far as like living my life in casinos and poker rooms, I don't think you're going to see that as much in the second act. There you go. That was a good answer. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, if you could pick one band or artist who you'd like to see inside the Las Vegas sphere. Oh, the Spear. That's a good question. The Spear is the brand new. I don't know if you've seen anything about it. It's like this new state of the art. It's the craziest thing ever. Um, I, the Raiders play that? Uh, no, that's oh. it's the Raiders playing that Legion, but it's a spear like it's the, you've seen like the eyeballs on the strip. You've seen all the stuff on Vegas, like on Twitter, where they're showing. I don't know. You just look up the spear. Yeah, we look and we got a. Uh, oh, wow. Say, it looks like a fucking planet. I'm going to say uh, my answer is fish. And they're, they, they're going to have a run there next year. I'll say, Holy shit. I'll, this I'll, is a real place? Yeah. yeah. I'm going I'm to no, say no, fish because their lighting guy, Chris Crow, is the best lighting. Bro, this is a real place? No, oh, you got to see the video inside of it. Like, it, it really can turn into anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Like if oh, you're going so it's there, like it's shrooms, like a Tupac holographic. Listen, you go. No, no, it's like a world. It's like a 4D. If you go in there some shrooms, you're gone. Okay. Go yeah, on. I want to go see fish there. That's my answer. I was about to watch the like Toy Story game on some shrooms. This is uh, like next level. Listen, if Joe can find a video, you will be like, damn. Matter of fact, I'm gonna help out real quick. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Look at that. Okay. No, I, yeah, I, I can't wait. Who's that? that? The guy from U2? Uh, he, if he's yeah, there. Yeah, no, that's because uh, they, they opened yeah, it. You know, U2 started it. They of got, course they did. U2 got some big residency and they're the first band to play They there. got some big money probably too, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. They they he put a whole album on my iPhone. I didn't even. I'd love to see City of Blinding Lights. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Let's. Oh, wow. That looks crazy. All right. Let's go. Um, you got a lot of the whole um, Bone Thugs shit. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you know. it. So that yeah, that was all right. Um, uh, so I'll talk about it. I yeah, yeah. Care. I mean, it's not to be honest with you, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't um made an honest mistake. <laughs> yeah, no. Look, man. I, I, what are you gonna do? You hey, know, like, hey, bro. Yeah, I, I say paid, it, paid a big price for I it. Say but it, it was the, just what you know. Anybody yeah, that knows me, they had the internet when I was growing up in the parish, bro. I'm telling you, bro. The whole parish was was singing every song. It was so. crazy to go through that, though. Like, uh, no, I bet it was. But I actually was pretty. As upbeat as you could be, most of it. I almost had a. What did you think when it well, happened? I almost had a panic attack. I was I, watching live, and dude. I almost had a panic attack that morning. Dave Portnoy called me right yeah. after, and he calmed me down. But I wasn't doing good for a couple hours. But then by that afternoon, I was like, you know what? Like anybody that knows me, you could see like there's no motive or intent. I right. apologize. You know, like I, I just really. Like, I was like, surely I'll get the benefit of the doubt here. But you're also a guy that, I, and I'm going to be real, bro, because, look, dude, I'm going to tell you, oh, especially so this especially this city, bro, like, I'm sure they weren't, like, pleased to see it. I mean, just. No, I it get it. No, but, should they be? But but let me just say this, bro. You don't, and I've, I've hung out with you enough to know this, you know, the people I grew up around, bro, they'll say that shit, and they'll say it in front of somebody that they're not supposed to, and they'll still stand by it. 
That's like these people that I grew up with, bro. Like they, you know, people in Saint Bernard Parish, bro. They're known as like they're like white people trying to act like black people. It's okay. just it's just the, it's just the case, bro. Like we've always been looked at like that. So like that's always how I grew up. Which you said you just you you're from fucking Monroe. I know that you guys ain't walking around singing songs like that. Man, bro. I look. You really just picked a one. Man, I just was like, it was like honestly, it I, was really the dumbest. And I'm serious. It was the dumbest, most out of like I wouldn't have thought that I'd ever see you sing a Bone Thug song. Like I was that's more. I thought it was gonna be funny, but yeah, I was more like I was more like, bro, why would he ever try to? It was the first of them off, May first. I thought it was funny. <laughs> And I was just like, but, bro, I would but, never but, expect it yeah. to rap a song ever. That was, yeah. You know? Probably, like, you go probably, to widespread probably, panic. Probably, probably won't happen again. Yeah, no. You yeah. Know, pro- probably done with that. But, no, it was, cra- it was just crazy how big it got and all that. And, uh, you know, just like, just everywhere. My brother, I'm here to tell you, bro. And, I mean, I understand that it got big, but I think a lot of that had to do with, and I'm serious, bro. I think a lot of it had to do with, like, you apologize. I'm serious. I think you apologizing. I think people retweeting it that were watching the stream. I don't think it would have ever got that big. I think most common sense people would be like, hey, bro, like he obviously didn't mean to do yeah. that. You see what I'm saying? Like he didn't mean to do that. There's a difference, bro. Yeah, I know people sure. where I grew up, yeah. like they will literally just say it on the fly like there's no repercussions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, there's no intent. I can tell you that. I uh, don't think there was, brother. So. No. God, no. Uh, that's no. No. I mean, I try to live my life. Like, I still feel in like the, I'm it's still in the black community. You, you probably lost a good bit of fans. Man, I actually was. <laughs> I was actually. <laughs> Let's uh, just call it what it no, is. No, I was actually surprised by it. Actually, like, man, I've been approached by at least 50, maybe. Oh, maybe <laughs> no, 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 no. Over, like, no, like, people, like, black people that didn't even know me that have, like, said, I know who you are and what happened to you is BS. I've had that, like, conversation with yeah. a lot of people. Um, I got like I feel like uh, I'm not saying you know there I'm sure some people are pissed and I get it, but, but the uh, people that were pissed were already rooting against you. Yeah, but I don't think it was that. I don't know. It, it really just seemed like pin gaming were the only people that were like that. That outraged. was the most. I feel like that. Like uh, that was really what it seemed like it was. You know. Yeah, and anybody that would sit here and say Caucasian wise, anybody Caucasian that would sit here and say that they never said that word. I mean, that it, it's just it's you're lying to yourself, bro. Like it, people have slipped it before. It's happened. Um, so I love when I see these like, uh, proactive, like white dudes trying to act like they never said it in their life before. They a bunch of fucking phonies, bro. And I'll tell them to their face. Um, they just are, bro. And they're not being transparent with themselves. But you know, I think that there was brutally blatantly, you could see that that was an honest mistake. Oh, no, you see, you could see the white in my face. The second oh yeah. You happened. went pale, I, like, brother. Pale. You could just see the, you pale. went it was pale, a, brother. Dude, it was I, and, I, and the next thing I thought about was Andy Frasco. I yeah. was like, man, that boy. I was like, he didn't know what he was getting into. Yeah, no, we're cool. He wasn't even like he was just like we were. You know, he he's just what a yeah. character. But yeah, I was overcoming adversity, man. Well, it was it was crazy. You know, I stayed pretty. Somehow up. you didn't get fully canceled. Yeah, yeah, I stayed. That up. should say a lot about your character, bro. Uh, uh, yeah, I got through. <laughs> like, so it was crazy this summer, the June thing. Okay, I went through a real bad stretch in June that was interesting. So I'm out in Vegas doing poker go for WSOP. Did you think that that was gonna be good? I, I, yeah, I enjoyed the job. Uh, the, I didn't do good in poker, but what was interesting, I I, I lost a really good friend of mine, the car act, okay. right before the barstool thing. The barstool thing happened. Then my buddy's dad, who hired me at airline, I was real close with, died of cancer at 58. And I, mean, I just went through all this in like a four or five week stretch. And I was like spiraling. Like I didn't start like drink again or anything, but I was like hitting the nicotine pen all the time. And I was like, you know, I was. What uh, does that say about me? I always hit the. I know, but like, I just love Joe's. But I, uh, I don't know. I just was like eating bad and wasn't exercising. I just was like mentally not in a good place from like June third or fourth to like late June, and then, uh, you know, I just wasn't doing good. And then I went to Red Rocks uh, for Panic Weekend and like literally just got out there in the mountain air. And it was like within two songs, I was like, enough of this bullshit. You're not a victim. You're, you've come, like, so far in life. Like, what what is this crappy attitude? We're putting it in. You can only feel r- down for so long. Yeah, but, 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 like, what are you doing? Like, look how far you've come in life. Like, get, you know, everybody, everybody goes through bad times. It's just part of it. And I threw away the nicotine pen that right out of that Sunday. I started day one of the low-carb diet that Monday. And I started lifting. Like, not just – I've always ran a lot. But, I mean, I started lifting weights. And now I'm on, like, week 16 low-carb. This is the best I've looked in 10 years. No, like, you I'm look in the, good, I'm in the two boy. Thir- I'm in the 230s now. I'm in XLs, like, 
and uh i've changed like i've changed everything man i mean like i, I like i lift weights i jog i really have the sugar thing is the biggest thing i mean i really sugar i candy. eat like 20 you know i really like really watch the sugar thing i don't eat bread anymore i don't eat potatoes i don't eat pasta motherfucker what you eat I eat a lot of, like, I eat eggs, avocados, like, omelets. That boy said avocados steak. like you live in yeah. Silicon yeah. Valley. Grilled seafood. I eat a lot of grilled seafood, steak, like, stuff like that. Uh, eat fruit still. Fruit, like, is natural sugar. Fruits are awesome, especially when you get older and can appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, but, like, I used to always, like, have an ice cream problem. Now I eat it maybe once every three or four weeks. Okay. But uh, I've changed everything, man. Yeah. I've changed everything, and it's the most fun thing ever. Like, I, I feel... I, I almost, I'll say this much. I've been calling it the second act stuff. It's the second act of life. I feel almost like a new creation on earth. That's how good I feel. You look right good, now. man. So yeah, I ran 10 good. miles yesterday for the first Jesus time in 10 God. years. Like uptown around the street, Carolina. I did four laps around Audubon at 1.8 a clip. I ran for like two hours. Uh, I'm running the St. Jude Half Marathon in Memphis in December. And I think what's coming out of the second act is I see the vision clearly, man. I have to commit to my health as my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth priority. I fought this obesity and stuff. I fought it my entire life. And I just, this is what I have to do. And if I do it, we're right. going to get it all. And so that's that's how I live now. And, uh, you know, I think you saw in Oxford that it started to pay off. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with it. And so I'm really just, I'm trying, I try to help people that are, you know, overweight struggling too with it. You know, I'm trying to be a good influence on people. This, this comment right here, man, uh, make them do the fast banana. No, I'd do it if we had one. Yeah, well, we got uh, I'm sure I'll be doing it on the X sooner than later. Well, lucky day, Mince. Yeah, but everything's, you know, so now it's moving to Chicago. Mince, we got bananas. You got bananas? I'll get bananas. Okay. Oh, we brought it. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I just wanted to put that on the table, you know, no pun intended. Figured that would be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think Mince is just the fastest banana eater in the world. You could sit. Yeah, you could sit. But no. I don't know if it's the fastest in the world. But whoa, no. whoa. Do we need to time this or like? I don't know what happens from here. I just know I had that people. Here's the funny thing. Somebody brought a banana. I signed somebody's banana at a Pelican game. I recently. think I saw that. Signed the yeah. banana. Yeah. Somebody said I brought game. a banana for you to sign. Is, is that the wildest thing you signed? You have to switch batteries. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. Probably. I hadn't done this in a little bit, so hopefully I'm not rusty. All right. Yeah, Ready? we'll fin. Yeah, you good. We'll finish right. with this right All here. Right. It's a good parting way right here for men's. Whoa. That oh my God, son! That was fast. Mm. Wow! Good effort. Holy shit! That was good effort. No, that was incredible. That was. Wait, dog. did he start yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like Flash. That was actually the fastest banana I've ever seen. I can't believe I. Probably the only thing I can do fast, but. I just wow. ran ten miles, bro. I can't run ten miles right now. Yeah, so. that, that wasn't fast. It was two hours. I, I was going like twelve minute clip. I mean, I was just going slow jog. But just people are good at different things, and you fucking killed. Well, that. no, the thing with the running, I figured out this trick. Like, I love going to those show, those panic shows, and all I do is run to the concerts, and so I'm like running is dancing. Yeah. And so I just like that's all it is. I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna go dance to the freaking concert. And right. I'm just jogging. You know? You're moving. I mean, yeah. I can tell you, bro. I'm in the house a lot, so I know when I go anywhere, it's doing something. I know that sounds sad, but it's just true, bro. Like when you're in the house a lot, I mean, dude, I'm 31, bro, and if I don't stretch once every three days, I'm gonna feel it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm into that. In I've been really working on the stretching stuff. How you doing with the stretching? A lot better. I'm starting. I can't quite touch my toes. We're almost there. Okay. I go to stretch class once a week, and uh, I'm really. I'm getting way, way more into it. I'm feeling more flexible. The stretching, I'm telling you what it, what it is. It's literally just doing it every, pretty much every day. Like the touching your toes thing, if you tried it every day for like 14 days, you'll have it by the 15th. Yeah, I'm getting, it's getting there, man. Yeah. I feel better. It, the thing on the health stuff is real interesting though. Like I used to just run, but it's about it being balanced. So I'll actually only run like two days a week now. The, even if you lift weights twice a week for 30 minutes, it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And like, I mean, I'm packing on muscle now. I lose about, I've been losing about a pound or two a week. Yeah. Like, I think, I don't know, I'm trying to, dude, I want to weigh 200. I'm 40 away from it. Yeah. I think 200 pound me would be something. Damn, bro. I mean, I'm in an XL right now, just to let yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, I weigh, so that I'm, just goes I'm, to show you, bro. I'm 170 pounds. I weighed 239 today. That's the first time I've been in the 230s since 2013. Nice. Today. Good for you, brother. So, good yeah, for you. it's good. So, we're... Just gotta keep on this path and get ready. At Chicago is gonna be a new world, man. It's crazy, but what? Um, man, this was great, bro. Oh, I appreciate we really you having me, man. I, I want to say this before I get out of here. You know this, but the, the respect I have for you. No, I appreciate it. Man. No, and I'll, this is actually something I had written down in my notes that I want to address right now. 
of all the things since I've done at Barstool, there's two I regret the most. One of them was saying Ole Miss should fire Mike Bianco when he won the national title, which, yeah. which looked pretty stupid. And the other was when I unfollowed you when I got hired at Barstool. Well, I said some things at that time, But too. you should have. But, yeah. like, I feel like they're – I'm so happy that we have such a good relationship now. Absolutely. Because I've been carrying the weight of that. Still, I still regret it to this day. And I am so – because, like, I got picked up by Barstool, and I have Dave and all this behind me, which you've built out of straight hustling. Because I, like, had to try to do all that for four years. I can't – the amount of respect I have for it, I can't even – I don't know if I'm properly explaining it. Yeah, well – Because you've built – like, you've done it by being yourself – it's been completely organic. You found your own niche, but not just the red beans and rice, but now your podcast brand. Yeah. But it, like, I just can't tell you enough how much respect I have for it. I mean, it, like, I'm almost speechless. Like, I just well, respect you that much. Well, no. I think it's that impressive what you've been able to build from nothing. And, uh, yeah, I just hope you realize that. I mean, I was so happy. I'm honored that you asked me to be your second guest. Well, dude, so look. I think that highly of you. Hey, look, man, let me just say, just going back to that time, I mean, I didn't, you know, I was upset. Because, dude, I'm young, bro. Dude, you should have been. I, I'm, mean, I'm, I'm young. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm young, not just young in age. I'm young into the industry. And, you know, I was hungry, bro. And when I tell you I was hungry, bro, I was really broke. I was super broke. And I was to where I couldn't even buy a coffee. So when I saw somebody, and, and I'll, I'll, I have no problem saying this. Oh, yeah. When I saw somebody make it before me from this state, I just couldn't sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just ate me up. You know what I'm saying? I so that's it. that was my immediate reaction. But, Ben, you got to realize, brother, like, that's just a part of growing, man. I no, look back I, on that. I look back on that. I, and I'm I like, said I wanted to bring it up on And this, so the fact that you say it no, like that. I, I still regret it you know. to this day. And, like, there's, like, a thing. I think our relationship, it's kind of a, like the rivalry that never was. Cause <laughs> it's like a natural thing with you being from the parish and you're Noah and LSU and you're an authentic Noah guy. Like, people always come to me, like, acting like I think I'm, like, some, like, king of Nola. I'm not. I'm from Monroe. I'm a North Louisiana dude. Yeah. I love New Orleans. I will do everything I can to support the food, the music, the sports. I'm here to support it. I don't yeah. think I'm some, like, there, there there was this, like, misconception that people, like, thought I thought I was some, like, Nola. I, that's No, not, that you can't control that. Yeah. That's people saying yeah. that. I'm, I'm here to contribute yeah. to support the economy and, like, help. But, like. Anyway, so our thing the, is an interesting. There's a lot of undertones to our relationship that are interesting. Yeah, but you know what? None of to, to me, bro. I think a part of just growing in life, bro. Like that stuff doesn't like you look back on that just like you said, and, and I feel the same way. I'm like, bro, I was out of line. Uh, I was is, out of line. I really said, the is. point is, is like, I've carried like it's been so cool as we become better friends. Yeah, dude. Hey, one of my one of my best friends that I grew up with, um, on the bus, he wanted to fight me for a whole year. I'll never forget it. Michael Dietrich. I know you probably might see this. Michael Dietrich wanted to fight me for a whole year, but he lived right behind me in St. Bernard Parish. And guess what, bro? One day, we just wound up squashing. That dude came one of my best friends before the, before the storm. Bro, life is, um, you got to be open to that, bro. Like, yeah. shit will happen, bro. Even when you got best friends. How many times with your best friend that you knew your whole life, you had some, some sh- shit go down? It happens, bro. Yeah. You're not real friends unless you go through some shit like that, to be honest with you. Siblings do it. No uh, doubt, you no, know. no doubt. But I wanted, I wanted to say it. It's all good, brother. No, it's all, it's all good. Of course, man. You keep doing you. I can't wait to. Yeah, no. I mean, I'm, I'm one of your biggest. You know, hey, and let you me know, also, you know that I've always. And let me also say, bro. As time goes, when you dealing with this internet shit, when you as a creator and all this shit, you start to notice, like, hey, man, people are, like, like you, for example, you have a niche, you have something that to offer to the internet. I was telling them earlier. Hey, not everybody will like Miss. Not everybody will like Devin Snow. But, like, enough people do to where you can have, you know, something good on the internet. Yeah. And that that is strong as garlic. That's something when I was pissed, being the way I was at that time, you know, I didn't necessarily understand that. You have a niche, bro. And it's, 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 it's almost, like, unexplainable. But at the same time, if you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, mints, bro, people like you because you're so, like, um, you're goofy. You don't even like like the thi- like the blurry camera and shit. Yeah, that's a niche. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's I just, a niche. I'm a cell, you know, I just like I'm, you're I'm, just being yourself. You probably no, you do, you're like that too, though. You're authentic. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, we're just ourselves, and like yeah, you know, and I own it. You know? Yeah, it's like it's like oh the cl- the camera's blurry. Okay, well it wouldn't be a video from you if it wasn't. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know no, what I'm saying? I, mean, <laughs> like, I just try to be, my, like I said, that's why I respect so much what you've built. You've built yeah. authentically yourself. The respect's mutual. Like, there's like a lot of the media stuff is fake. And like, that's part of why I think I've made it a bar stool pretty well, too, is like, I don't have to play a character. I just am myself, yeah. you know, and I think right. that doesn't like, you know, doesn't get old after six months. Right. So excited about the future. Uh, I want to say thanks for having me, though, man. This is fun. Fuck Great yeah. Oh, this is amazing. I, you know, this is. This yeah. is cool. Just the evolution of, uh, you know, I love seeing the evolving, you know, like you Gotta built juice. something so cool, the red beans niche, but like there's so much more. And now you're doing the post game. Well, this is why I quit my job. Yeah. So when I quit my job in February 2020, I didn't go eat red beans. I went yeah. and got on the show and this, I was on the mic, you know, this, this uh, that roadcaster, you know, that was one of the first things I bought final cut pro, which is an editing software. That was one of the first things I bought in 2019, this mic and like, None of that has to do with Red Beans. You know, I really always thought I could be good on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was in comedy, et cetera, et cetera. The Red Beans thing, to my benefit, to my my own creation, like, that just came. Yeah. You know, that wound up coming a few months later. Love it. Um, but, you know, my true passion is uh, talking to people, you know, being an entertainer. Um, you know, I love Red Beans. But, I mean, when Like pe- evolution. When we pe- evolve when, in life, you When know? people ask me, hey, man, like, what do Red Beans mean to you? Motherfucker, I don't know. <laughs> you want me to write you a poem about it? I don't. I don't fucking know. You want a haiku? I, you know, they 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 mean the same to me as they mean to everybody else that grew up down here. We just always had them. Yeah. They were all. Oh, what well, did you know? How the origin of red beans start? No, motherfucker. Like, oh yeah, I do. But like, who cares? Yeah, it's funny. You know. So no. anyway, well, um, can't wait to see the evolution of it. Uh, you know, fun to be a part of. I'm here yeah. a few more weeks. Let's. I want to kind of maybe put some out in the universe. Maybe we have maybe Halloween. We we do something big. Well, let's go to Moscas. Yeah, let's do something before uh, before I head out. Let's we yeah. can, we'll film. Some, so let's let's do like a big glass. Yeah, so no let's doubt. Do something. Let's yeah. Do something. So all right. So this is um another episode. R Y B. I'm just gonna call it R Y B. I don't really need to call it. Any, interpret it for what you want. Respect your body. Respect your buddy. Respect your brother. Respect your R Y B. I like that. Yeah. Respect your. Uh, is there any other, y'all got any questions for Mince though before we before we head out of here? Um, why y'all got that picture of Mince and this guy with a big ass fucking mouth pulled up right now? Oh, huh? I mean, I don't. I ask my this questions. This guy, this guy looks like Wayne Zelinsky, bro. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy, man. That's my guy, Drake, man. Oh, I didn't know. I, yeah. Oh no, I don't know why. I don't know why Joe pulled yeah, him up. Yeah, but Joe, no, that's, that's Joe like guy. looking at that shit. No, that's bro. my guy, Drake. That's my guy, Drake. Actually, he's a big fan of yours, man. As you oh. can see, as yeah. you can see, has a picture oh. with you. So that yeah. was the guy that wanted the banana. Yes. Yes. I, hope, I hope I didn't let him down. No, I don't think you did, that bro. Was a good effort, hey. <laughs> I don't think you did. Um. All right, let's get out of here. You doing hogs for the cause again? Of course, I'll go every year. Uh, People think gonna, you what, created that. Yeah, that did not. That did not. <laughs> that did not happen. But uh, no, what's coming for me with my Nola relationship going forward? You'll always see me here for hogs. You'll always see me here for one of the jazz fest weekends. Yeah. You'll always see me here for Mardi Gras. Like it'll be six to eight times a year. Love I'm still it. here. I'll always have a footprint in here, and uh, you know that's that's what's what's happening. You know, in the Chicago, dude, two hour flight to everywhere in America, baby. Man, so anybody you want to thank before we get off of here? Man, uh, you for having me and your crew. Uh, this uh, is yeah. awesome. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this has been this has been really fun. I mean, I told Devin this before. This is the most excited I've been about any non barstool media maybe ever. Like, yeah. I just thought, like, yeah, I just love. Yeah, you I ever mean, did some shit like this? I wanted to ask you that. This is I've done some like pods, in person? but not like a legit one. Like, yeah, this. like I've done like oh zoom in on some pod. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, no, this is like th- this is. Do so you think this feels better than like doing? Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, the vibes are great and like. I just felt like I knew. I mean, this could have gone ten hours. There's so much to no say. No doubt, here, bro. Here, you and me. I mean, there's. I'm so sorry, we got to get out of no, here. I know, we got no, no. I mean, I'm just saying, there's so much. Just yeah. 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 So I just appreciate it, and yeah, man. Hopefully, it's in my last appearance. You know. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. All right, we out of here. Uh, RYB, another episode. Uh, thank you to everybody on the desk, bro. The desk, bro. If we didn't have the desk, we wouldn't have the pod, bro. I really mean that, bro. Because I've done shows without other people, and you know that shit is is. It's uh, it makes you where you can't be yourself. So shout out to the desk, uh, Joe, Jordan, Jay Saint. We got Will uh, back here too, who's Editor. working shorts and reels. So we get the shorts and reels coming. I know we didn't put no shorts and reels out, but we'll get to that. Um, and then yeah, hopefully next time we get on here, it's it's more optimistic as far as like you know the Saints and 
LSU and all that fucking shit. It's a bad shit. time. It's a bad yeah, time for Louisiana bad. sports. Party top. Andre the 68 Chevy gold wheels in my rolling reel. Outside your house, I'll pull off if you ain't ready. It's like a jungle sometime. It make me wonder how to survive. So many summers, I get high to keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometime. It make me wonder how to survive. So many summers, I get high to keep from going under.